الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh So, uh, Barista Rizwan has kind of, I don't know what word I should use, but he's kind of forced me into uh, speaking about um, about Valentine's Day. But I think the title of this talk is probably more appropriate to what I really would prefer to speak about. Um, I think the important thing about tomorrow, um, if you can get beyond uh, St. Valentine and why it's called Valentine's Day, etc., is that it's meant to be about love, it's meant to be about romance, right? It's meant to be about people doing something to express their love, something some kind of token of a love that they are already enjoying or that they wish to enjoy. Everybody has a Valentine tomorrow. And what sometimes is understood from our discussions of Muslims and their discussions about Valentine's Day is that people begin to make an assumption that there is no love in Islam because we don't celebrate these things which kind of can take nicely takes me on to uh, the issue itself um, first of all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, Rahim Allah is Rahman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the quality of Rahma which essentially if you look up the word love in the dictionary, essentially um, is very much to do with love. So love begins with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is handed over to mankind. So any discussion about Valentine's Day isn't a negation of love, but a negation of a festival in get, it, it embedded in a particular culture. Alright, and I think that's the first thing we need to understand. So, what I want to do, inshallah, is I want to quickly speak, say a few things about Valentine's Day and actually go on to the, the issue of, of love. What is the alternative? So, Valentine's Day is, first of all, nobody can say in terms of absolute facts what it's about. And uh, to be honest, I don't know what the fuss is all about. The only reason why we feel we have to discuss it is because some of our people celebrate it. Because Muslims have begun to celebrate Valentine's Day, many Muslims have, uh, are, uh, have, are, are contributing to the multi-billion pound business that is the business on Valentine's Day. Many Muslims have also ordered bouquets and flowers on that day. Many Muslims have bought cards and, and, and have you know, are, are ready to hand them over to their loved ones and so on and so forth and they're celebrating it. And the general idea inside them is, well, what's, what's wrong with it? It's all, about, it's all about love, right? So what they've done is they've, they've bought into what they see as a positive value that underpins the festival. And they're thinking, well, the festival's therefore not that much of a big deal. You know, why not if it's, gonna, if it's about that? Of course, there's still the question of whether the love that, that they are trying to show tomorrow is even permissible, whether it's halal or not. That's another question. So, what I was saying is that actually it's quite a mysterious festival. A lot of people can't say accurately where it originates from and what it's really about. But the general idea is that it used to be a pagan festival celebrated at this time of the year. Um, so essentially a festival that really doesn't have a place in any, in any particular religion. Um, but then when uh, the Romans adopted Christianity, this celebration already existed in some of the places that, in the places that they ruled. So they decided 
to kind of hold on to that celebration. And the other narrative, of course, the other story is that the Roman Emperor Claudius II had, for whatever reason, had issued a decree that forbade healthy men from marrying. So Saint Valentine, this saint, he started this initiative to get people secretly married. So he had this mass kind of matrimonial uh, festival where he got people married secretly as a way to rebel against the uh, the decree of of the emperor. And for that reason, he this act of his in celebration of love, this this act that resisted against um, what was essentially uh, a boycott, uh, essentially uh, this this decree against love and against marriage, uh, was resisted by Saint Valentine, and for that for that reason, he is celebrated. And the day in which he used to hold that particular mass kind of uh, event was on this particular day, was on the 14th of February. And that's basically the history. Sometimes when you hear talks about Valentine's Day, um, there is an attempt by by some of the speakers and ulama to, to make it sound a lot worse, you know, uh, and say that it's this, it's shirk, etc, etc. The bottom line is that from an Islamic Sharia point of view, it is a celebration that doesn't exist in Islam. Most of you can easily accept that. It does not exist in Islam. Islam has its own celebrations. One of the other reasons why ulama say that it is prohibited is fundamentally uh, because of the fact that it is in emulation of other people. It is in emulation of people that are not Muslims. And the Prophet wasallam says that whoever emulates a people, he is from among them. Whoever copies, imitates a people, he or she is from among them. So if you do something purely to copy another person, and especially if it is something that has deep cultural meanings that are un-Islamic, then the Prophet wasallam's warning is that you are from those people. And this of course is something that informs can inform our attitudes with regards to Christmas with regards to Easter you know and Valentine's Day and other celebrations as well that if we start to do things just because we want to be like other people all right then that is essentially prohibited by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam why because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has brought you something he has given us something that frees us from having to copy anybody else. It frees us from having to be like anybody else. The Prophet wasallam has brought us something that should make the world want to copy us. It should make the world want to emulate us, want to envy us. And whether you know it or not, I know you might see all the razzmatazz and so on and so forth, and whether you accept it or not, go and go and read, kind of, uh, just go behind the surface a little bit, and you'll see that despite our weakness as Muslims, I think we can be a lot stronger um, than we are at the moment. The envy is still there. People envy the fact that Muslims uh, are still strong families. People envy the fact that we have clarity about who we are and what our place is in the world and about where we are going. People envy the fact that our grandparents still have their grandchildren around, around them. People envy the fact that when we are ill, right, we, people can't stop visiting us. All right, I'm telling you something as simple as that. You know, um, my father-in-law has been unwell for a very, very long time. All right, so I've, I've, I've been to lots and lots of wards full of elderly people. All right, and it's depressing to see the number of times we are the only visitors. There's five or six people, ten people in the ward, right? All elderly people. They've reached a time of their life when they should be celebrated. Forget St. Valentine's and forget Christmas and Easter. These elderly people should be celebrated. Why? Because they're at the end of all of their life's achievements. 
right? Whether it is their achievements in work, whether it is their achievements in terms of the children that they have, in terms of their grandchildren, all of those things are their achievements. But there's nobody around them. There's nobody around them. And they're alone. You know, I, we would visit every single day, someone is visiting our elder. Every single day, you know, there's a crowd of people around him. But then every day we have to go through the depressive scene of seeing all of those people with nobody around them. Alright? People envy that. People envy that. People envy the fact that we have a connection with something beyond the physical. We have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People envy the fact that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is celebrated as the greatest man in history. People envy our numbers. People envy the fact that our deen is the fastest growing religion in the world. And still is when it is at its weakest point. Many would argue, and it is. Alright? We are, our Islam is probably at its weakest in its 14 and a half hundred year history. How can it possibly still be the fastest growing religion in the world? How does that happen? But it does. It does. The, the Christian denominations are no longer the largest religious denominations of the world, even though they've been around for a good six, seven hundred years longer than Islam. Alright? The Islamic denominations have overtaken. How does that happen when Islam is supposedly on the decline? When the world's superpowers follow other ways of life? This makes us, this makes people envious of us. Hopefully in a positive way, sometimes in a negative way. But it makes people envious. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ has brought us something that's beautiful. And that something is so beautiful that it needs to be copied. And when people abandon something as valuable as that and begin to copy something else, then they've seriously got their wires crossed. They've missed the mark. They have missed the mark. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ is talking about when he says, مَن تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ Whoever emulates or copies a nation, he is from among them. We copy the Prophet ﷺ because we are from him. We are from his ummah. So we copy him. We don't copy anybody else. Alright? And then of course, Valentine's Day is prohibited because of what it has become. You know what? There wouldn't have been so much wrong with Valentine's Day if you entertain, if you just entertain this idea for a second. If Valentine's Day still celebrated what St. Valentine, if that version of the story is true, what St. Valentine was doing. Because he was celebrating marriage. He was, he was making sure that young people who were prohibited from being married could get married. He was marrying them against a tyrant ruler, against the emperor's tyrannical decree. So if, Saint, if Valentine's Day was about marriage, you know, I'd say, you know what, great. If they say something good at least. All right? But Valentine's Day isn't about marriage. It's no longer about marriage. It's about zina. It's not about marriage, it's about zina. The majority of people who are going to celebrate Valentine's Day are going to do, are going to celebrate relationships outside of marriage, especially the Muslims who are going to do it. They're going to celebrate relationships outside of marriage. The ones who are married, if you're a Muslim and you are married, right, and you have a good marriage, I'm hoping that needs to be said, then you don't need Valentine's Day. You don't need Valentine's Day. You, you, it probably comes and goes and you don't even notice it. You know, thankfully you probably save a bit of money as well. Right? The point is you don't need Valentine's Day to celebrate your love because, because it exists. The love exists. You have, a, you have a family that loves you and you love them. Right? You have, you have a warm uh, uh, home. Okay? You don't need Valentine's Day to celebrate anything. So the people that often do celebrate it are not celebrating legitimate love, they're celebrating haram love or the illusion of love. Okay, because often it doesn't go anywhere anyway and you end up with a girl that's crying and a boy that's celebrating. Alright, a boy that's go gone off and you know he's kind of bragging with his mate and the girl's crying because she, she thought he loved her. Alright, that's basically usually what you get. Yeah? You know, all that heartache eventually to just get dumped. Alright? 
Because that's basically what's going on. If you listen to what people are talking about, um, you know, on public transport, especially young people. I was, I had an interesting trip today. I was on the bus after a long time. I spent two hours on the bus after a very long time. Right now, I happened to be on the bus kind of when school finished. Right, so I got to hear. I, I, I sat upstairs, so I got to hear what everybody spoke about. Right, you know, most of it is complete trash. All right, but you know, a lot of it is. Oh, you know, do you think she's good looking or no? And oh yeah, I did this, bro. And and everybody's bragging about their exploits. Right, boys are bragging about their exploits. You know, then yeah, at that age, you don't love anybody. All right, especially if you've not been brought up well enough. If you've not been brought up well enough to respect women. If you've not been brought up well enough to respect women, what are you going to do? You're not going to respect them, you're going to disrespect them, right? And ultimately, it's going to be the game. It's going to all, it's going to be about the conquest. And that's, and Valentine's Day is just part of that conquest, right? It's another battle. You've got to be victorious, you know? The girl's got to give you a, a, a peck or a snog or whatever it is at the end of it. That's it. And then eventually, eventually, when it doesn't work out, it's the girl that cries. The boy goes, ah, oh, don't worry, man. You know, there's, there's, there's lots of fish in the sea. That's what the boy says. Anyway, the point is, the point is, as far as Islam is concerned, celebrating Valentine's Day is haram. All right? Khalas. Let's just, let's end that conversation. Let's end that conversation there. So, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you make any plans, cancel them. All right? And, um, of course, most importantly, if you're in a haram relationship, cancel that. All right? And get your priorities straight in life. But coming to... How much time do I have? I don't know how much time I have. Yeah, just, just come and tell me. So, but the important thing, the important thing is, this thing that Valentine's Day is supposed to be about. Love. What does Islam have to say about that? What does Islam have to say about that? Because that's the real topic to discuss. All right? That is the real topic to discuss. Let's take this opportunity to think about that, to think about that and see if we can take some less take some lessons of love, not love, just love. All right? You know, just love. Let's take some lessons about that. So I started off by saying that first and foremost our love is centered on two things, on two things. Our love is centered on the love that we receive from Allah, the love that we receive from Allah, and the love that we give to Allah. These are the two most important directions of love in humanity. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, He is merciful, then according to the English definition of, of what love is, According to the English definition of what love is, the word Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah's Rahma fits the, the English definition of love exactly. Okay. Yes? So that's the first thing. And then there is what we give back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala submission. We submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by trusting Him ultimately. Trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately. And we do that through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ that, in, that say, O Messenger of Allah, if you love Allah, if you claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then, which of course tells us that we are supposed to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we are supposed to pray and worship because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of love. Uh, worshipping Allah out of love is greater than worshipping out of fear, but both of them are legitimate. Alright? So if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me, i.e. follow the Messenger of Allah. Follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah will love you. So both directions will get fulfilled, how? By following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And hence the relevance of that hadith when I, says, the, when I said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever copies a people he is from them. We don't copy somebody else, we copy the Messenger of Allah so that we can be of the Messenger of Allah. So that we can be of the Messenger of Allah. So that's the first thing. And then, there is the love 
that Allah's Messenger has, there is another bi-directional love. The, the, the love that Allah's Messenger has for his Ummah and the love that his Ummah have for him. The Prophet wasallam loves us so much, so much that he completely gave up and sacrificed his whole life for us. For us. I mean, Taif is a good example, because there's no time to discuss lots of examples. But Taif is a good example, right? The enemies of Allah, the enemies of Allah, the enemies of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are being called to Islam by the Prophet. First of all, if that was us, we would have said, you know what, they don't like me, get lost. Tough luck, it's your loss. That's what our attitude would have been. The Prophet sallallahu first of all, he goes to them. He goes to them so that they can have Islam. Ultimately, do you know what that's about? It is about his love and concern for humanity. He doesn't want to see a single one suffer in Akhirah. He does not want to see a single member of humanity suffer on the Day of Judgment. So he goes to them to give them Islam. They reject it. They don't say, oh, no, 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 get lost, we don't like you. No, 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 no. They reject him and they set their youth on him. So they pelt him with stones until he bleeds from head to toe and his shoes clog up with blood. So Jibreel, you know, the most powerful creature in Allah's creation, right? Comes to the Prophet ﷺ and said, you know what, this is what they've done to you. You just say the word. You just say the word and I will crush them in between the two mountains. Just say the word. And the Prophet ﷺ says, you know what, they've rejected me. And he's dripping in blood, right? They've just pelted, he's dripping in blood. And he says, you know, they've rejected me. Maybe their, maybe their offspring will accept Islam. Maybe their children will accept Islam. The Prophet ﷺ could have said, you know what, that's it. You know, they've had their chance. There'd be no blame on him. If the Prophet ﷺ had done that on that day, there would be no blame on him. Right? But today... The, the, the descendants of those people would not be Muslim if he had done that. Right? But he did it out of love. Because it wasn't about him, it was about them. It was about making sure that they had the best chance. And in return, the Prophet ﷺ says to us, None of you believes, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ماله وولده والناس أجمعين That none of you believes until I am more beloved to him than his wealth, his children, and all people. So to us, the Prophet ﷺ is the most beloved. He is the most beloved person. And you know what? If you can't figure out why, make it so. If you can't figure out whether or not the Prophet ﷺ is the most beloved person to you, make it so. And here is where you and I have to receive our greatest lesson in love. Because let me ask you this question, what is it? What is it that makes a person love another? What is it that makes a person love another? Looks, the most shallow of reasons is looks. Yes, it's important to many of us. For some of us, that's all it is. Most people who can't think about anything but, but looks eventually end up living a miserable life. Because looks only last for less than half of your life. And then what? Alright? And if, you, if it's all about looks and you've not thought, thought about anything else, then you end up with a nasty person. Anyway, if it's looks, then the Prophet ﷺ was the most beautiful of all people. If it's about, oh, you know, this person has a really, really good family background, then there is no greater family background than the family background of the Prophet ﷺ, than the ancestry of the Prophet ﷺ, which goes through Ibrahim ﷺ to Adam ﷺ. Alright? If it is character, if it's personality, and how a person behaves, then the Prophet ﷺ, Allah declares him to be upon a great example of character. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ there is nobody who has a better personality than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What do you need? Say anything. Oh, this is why people are loved. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has it. So he is deserving of our love. Make him your, your most beloved first before you go on to anybody else. And then we can come on to our love for each other. Then we can come on to our love for each other. And you know what? It's also about those same qualities. It's also about 
those same qualities because we also outside of our parents and in the context of Saint Valentine's let's talk about in the context of romantic love between a man and a woman all right we're not talking about the other type at least not today anyway let's talk about that in romantic love between a man and a woman what's important you can take this lesson away because quite a lot of you are mashallah young all right maybe you're gonna get married in the future what I said about why we need to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is exactly ultimately why you will eventually find somebody who you will grow to love as young people and those of you who are married you already have inshallah you know sometimes it doesn't work out as well yeah by the way um, and you know it's the same thing. It's beauty, it's beauty, it's good character, good personality, all right? It's background, family background, which you can let, you can bundle into that job, wealth, etc. etc. Sometimes it's just wealth. And it's also and it's religion, it's things like Deen, right? It's religion. It's those same things. And out of them the most important is Deen. The most important is religion. Then the most important is personality and character. All right. Then comes family background, and least of all, it's appearance. Least of all, it's appearance. And if you get your priorities messed up and it goes the other way, if all you can see in a person is their looks, all right, then chances are, chances are, things are going to get really, really miserable for you. Especially if you have completely overlooked the other three. Okay. And you know what? If Dean is the most important quality for you. If you can make deen the most important thing, then you will never disrespect a man, and a woman will never disrespect. Uh, you'll never disrespect a woman, and a woman will never disrespect a man. And the greatest disrespect that a male can have for a female, and a female can have for a male, is to have a relationship outside of marriage. That is the greatest act of disrespect. Is to is to allow yourself to give in and get sucked in to be stupid enough right to, to allow these billboards to trick you and to allow the television adverts to trick you if you've done that and and then you've gone and started trying to chat up somebody and i know girls are doing it as well now right you know things have gone that far now you know back in our days it was always the boys that did it, and the girls used to run the other way you know i hear now that it's we're getting equal rights you know human rights are playing out Anyway, it's a different point. The point is that if if you do that, if Dean is the most important thing, then you won't disrespect a person. And the greatest act, greatest act of disrespect is to buy into this Valentine's Day narrative, this Valentine's Day hype. All right. First of all, don't do it on this day. And if you are married, every day is Valentine's Day. Every day is Valentine's Day. Seriously. Alright, because if you can't make it so, then... I don't know. Should have attended the Art of Marriage course. Okay? Anyway, um, I have to wrap up. I probably had a few more things to say, but um, I have to wrap up. Jazakum Allah Khairan. Seriously, uh, Muslims shouldn't need to have talks on Valentine's Day. Alright? We shouldn't need to. Um, the whole thing is... is even Christmas and Easter and all of this stuff it's all just commercialized trickery that's it that's all it is it's to, it's to make you spend your money so if nothing else don't be a fool okay